All right, everyone, let's react to a masterclass in misrepresentation and straw man argumentation from Jon Stewart. I'm going to reply to a clip that was released last Friday that gained a lot of traction. I saw this video on Twitter posted by Jon Stewart from his show The Problem with Jon Stewart. As I'm filming this, the tweet has over 20 million views and over 100,000 likes. People are eating it up, but the whole thing is terribly deceptive, and you deserve to know the truth. Let's get right into it. I'm a strong proponent of the Second Amendment. Uh -huh. I believe the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Uh -huh. That's the one right that's listed in the Constitution that uses that very specific shall affirmative language, you know, shall not be well, infringed. Oh, it's also the one right that uses the, the phrase well-regulated. Correct, when it's talking about the militia and the state. Yeah. So we're only 15 seconds in, and John is misrepresenting the Second Amendment. Here is the text. A well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It's that simple. That's the entire thing. So yes, the words well-regulated do appear, but only in the first clause, in reference to a militia, like Mr. Dom replies. And in 2008, the Supreme Court in D.C. v. Heller made clear in its decision that the amendment's prefatory clause announces a purpose, but it does not limit or expand the scope of the second part, the operative clause. The operative clause's text and history demonstrate that it connotes an individual right to keep and bear arms. The well-regulated militia part was just to provide some context from what was written in the late 1700s. The operative clause that actually recognizes the right to keep and bear arms is not restricted by the inoperative prefatory clause. But John either doesn't know this or doesn't care. He wants you to hear the words well-regulated out of context and thinks it's a free-for-all to deprive others of their constitutional right. The Second Amendment. I'm not again. I don't want to ban guns, but you're saying more guns makes us more safe. Yes. So when we got 400 million guns in the country, we had an increase and gun deaths went up. So when exactly does this curve hit that takes it down? Would a billion guns do it? Let's just run those numbers. You know, 400 million, 50,000. Uh huh. You're talking about a less than a fraction of not even a percent, of a hundredth of a percent. But it goes up, not down. So your argument is backwards. But if you want, okay, so, so let's, let's come up with a solution, okay? So one of the issues, a contributing factor, again, I, I believe it's the individual that is the problem. So your solution to that is give them more guns. Again, John is misrepresenting the argument. This is a perfect example of a straw man argument. A straw man argument is one where the argument is intentionally depicted in a weaker, incorrect form so that it's easier to defeat. The debate obviously isn't about whether we need 400 million or a billion or any specific number of guns. That hypothetical serves to make the whole stance seem silly, but it's a straw man. There is something to be said for the broader point. Everyone agrees that once a bad guy has a gun, it takes good guys with guns to stop them. And there are legitimate reasons to believe that having less restrictive gun policies having more guns in congruence with people's constitutional rights is a good strategy to enable good people to exercise their freedom and deter bad actors. On top of that, there's plenty of questions as to whether bad actors would be stopped by more restrictions. People break the law all the time and government regulation fails all the time. So I'm saying that because people are the problem, we need to look at the problems that those people are facing and how do we address it. For but instance, you've removed the ability for the state to do that. No, because, because you're... If uh, you don't have background checks mm -hmm. and you don't have registration and permitting, how do you know who has a problem in terms of the people who you're giving a gun to? Do you want to talk about the background checks first or do you want to talk about solutions first? I want to talk about... What you're doing is you're bringing chaos to order. First of all, it's a totally fair stance that the issue is people rather than guns. Crazy people are a serious issue and they commit serious crimes. We need to have a broader social cultural discussion about why so many people are driven to commit heinous crimes and simply enhancing the government's ability to judge you and decide how much you deserve your rights does not address the underlying issue. Further, to characterize deregulation as bringing chaos to order is just plain wrong. When the government enacts sprawling regulations, they seldom, if ever, are orderly or sensible. Why would we assume that increased government bureaucracy, 
increased monitoring of your personal information, and increased authority to deny you your rights would be an orderly ordeal. Especially when we consider that the drive for self-defense in the related market are naturally occurring phenomena, as old as human civilization, why is the baseline assumption that the government would provide order if they butt their nose in? Think about the war on drugs. People have always wanted substances, there's always been a market, and look how well the government has done in bringing order to that. Hint, not very well. It is a baseless, subjective, personal opinion to believe that government intervention is effective at providing order. That's your subjective opinion, you, that it's bringing chaos to order. It's not my subjective opinion. We it have 50,000 gun-related deaths. That's not a subjective opinion. Okay, so That's dead people. <sighs> that sounds startling. I get it. But let's talk about alternatives. Can government help? I mentioned the war on drugs because that's a great example of what happens when the government gets involved in a situation, when the government tries to bring order. Let's look at just a few stats to get an idea of how that attempt went for the government. According to the ACLU, in the nine years between 2001 and 2010, 8.2 million people were arrested on marijuana charges. 88% of these arrests were simply for possession. And that was a nine-year window. The war on drugs began in the early 70s. Okay. Currently, 1.2 million people are incarcerated in America. With that, according to the NIH, 85% of the prison population was incarcerated for a crime involving drugs or has an active substance use disorder. So, gun death statistics are alarming. But, is it reasonable to question the effectiveness of government intervention? Absolutely. The government's idea of order is stripping you of your freedom and locking you away if you don't comply. The government loves ruining people's lives when we give it the green light. Let me, let me back up for a second. In every other place in your life, you want to bring order, but guns are the outlier for you. So let's start with immigration. You want registration, maybe a wall, maybe not a wall. Why do you want that? Well, one of the reasons is because of the fentanyl crisis. Right. I mean, okay. But, and but, you don't know when it's coming across. So what do you but do? But the fentanyl crisis is twice what the gun death crisis okay, is. Okay, so, so until the gun crisis gets no, to the fentanyl level, not until it, you don't want to bring order. No, not until it. But, but do you see my talk, point? If we're going to talk about protecting lives, that's a larger issue in uh -huh. America yes. than guns is. If we're talking about individual lives yes. of ways that they can be protected, loss of life in America. There's loss of life through fentanyl. There's loss of life through obesity. The obesity crisis in America mm -hmm. costs six times the number of lives as guns. Right, and, and so, you're the guy saying, you know what would help this? Ice cream. No. <sighs> that was kind of funny. No, ice cream never stops diabetes or obesity. But good guns stop bad guns, and we can all agree on that. Nobody calls the guy with a pocket knife multi-tool to stop the guy with an AR-15. And nobody really thinks you couldn't get a gun if you wanted one, even if we banned them. No. So, you know what would help the problem that we're facing with firearms? What? The fatherlessness crisis that we have in America. If you look at the statistics... Right. Yeah, they're 80, dying from gun deaths. 80 percent. Yeah of school shooters uh -huh. either came from a broken or fatherless home. Uh -huh. So you, you would say no guns for fatherless yeah. homes? No. Straw man, misrepresentation, It's exactly what that is. There's nothing more to be said. God forbid anyone discuss broader social issues that lead to crime. Are all we allowed to do is ask the government to save the day with the rules and regulations? It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. No, that's not what I would say. Oh. I would say that fathers need to be more engaged. Great. Uh, so let's crime let's with a firearm more, if they don't have a father in the home. Let's put more resources into areas that are poverty stricken. All for it. And into fatherlessness, and that's something that we're, but we're doing. But why, with guns, are you against bringing order? I'm not against bringing order. You are. You're also making it less safe for cops and for people. When the police go to a domestic call, it's the most dangerous call they can go on. Mm -hmm. In your world. If they knew that there were firearms in the house, that's a safer call. Is that what you're saying? No, because police... Because why? Because police treat every situation as a, pot a potential... But aid. more guns makes us safer. So why don't, when the police go to a house filled with guns, why don't they breathe a sigh of relief knowing that this Second Amendment that shall not be infringed is being exercised so fruitfully 
in this home. Are you familiar with the 39-year-old woman in New Jersey? I'm familiar the, with a ton of anecdotes. The, yeah, I'm no, asking not, you a simple is, question. This is not an anecdote, When John. the police this actually go happened. to a house. She had a restraining order on her ex-boyfriend. I can run through I know, we can hundreds through and that. hundreds of examples mm -hmm. of women killed by their domestic partners by guns that were not taken away through uh, uh, the lessening of red flag laws. You're pivoting but to knives, anecdotes. No, this is not anecdotes. What the police say, if we had gun registration, if we were able to track purchases, if we are, they have a technology that every bullet would be stamped with an individual like a fingerprint. If we had an ATF that wasn't defunded, we would be able to enforce gun laws more effectively and we would be able to solve gun crimes more effectively. You're against all of that. In a fairy tale world, would the job of police be safer if they were the only ones who had guns? Yes. Do we live in a fairy tale world? No. People will always have guns, and there will always be an inherent risk involved with the job of the police. And attempting to make policing safer for police is no excuse to trample the constitutional rights of the people. Some food for thought. Even if we could live in the fairy tale world where guns were restricted, would that be a good thing for policing? Maybe for the police, since 2017, over 6,000 unarmed people, unarmed people, have been shot to death by police in America. And the raw number increased each year in that time frame. Because the person is the threat, not the firearm, not the knife. I get the, it. The person and the individual Great. is the one that is the concern Great. here. But you don't want anything that could help law enforcement or society determine whether or not a person is a good guy with a gun or a bad guy with a gun. Most even the law enforcement. The registry would allow you to have much more effective background checks. Mm -hmm. So. I don't understand why you won't just admit that you are making it harder for police to manage the streets by allowing all of these guns to go out without permits, without checks, and without background stuff. Why is that hard? Why can't you just stand by that? Because that's not what I'm doing. I'm defending the individual's right to keep and bear arms. That's a different argument. Okay, but you may do, here's, here's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You wanna say I'm a Second Amendment purist and I'm making it safer. You're not. You're making it more chaotic. And that's not a matter of opinion. That's the truth. That is a matter of opinion, John. But why take away their tools? Because certain of their tools that they're using would be infringements upon the people's right to keep and bear arms, upon their constitutional rights, upon due so process, you're saying upon other things. That registering is an infringement. Yes. Okay. Is voting a right? It's a right for citizens, yes. Do you have to do anything to do it? Yes. What do you have to do? It depends on the state. What do you have to do? Sometimes you have to you have to be at least 18 years old. What do you have to do? And Keep in going. some places you have to uh -huh. have a government issued ID. What do you have to? You have to. You have to be on the voter rolls. Register. You have to register. Mm -hmm. So you have to register to a right. Is that an infringement? Does the right to voting say shall not be infringed? Oh, so this is just a semantic argument now. <sighs> comparing voting rights to gun rights is comparing apples to oranges. As I said before. The self-defense market is a naturally occurring phenomenon. Government regulation is an intrusion upon it. Voting is a function that exists entirely within the frame of reference of the government. The government creates voting. You have a right to participate, but of course the government will create the rules by which voting happens if it creates voting itself. Now, no, it's not. you believe voting rights can be infringed because it doesn't say specifically is it shall an, not be infringed. Is it an infringement upon a 17-year-old's right to vote, since they don't have that right to vote? No. Oh, it's we, not an infringement on them? No, okay. ab absolutely not. Why not? You're the Because you're the one making the argument, not me. I'm saying even rights have responsibilities, and that within those responsibilities, responsibilities are responsibilities yes. and order, otherwise it's chaotic. I'll go you one further. You want to ban drag show readings to children. To my house, yes. Why? Why, why, what are you protecting? Why can we prohibit children from voting, those under 18 from voting? Why are you banning, but also that? Is, is that free speech? Are you infringing on that performer's free speech? They can continue to exercise their free speech, just not in front of a child. Why? Because the government does have a responsibility to protect. I'm sorry? The government does have a responsibility uh -huh. in certain instances to What's protect children. What's the leading cause of death amongst children in this country? And I'm gonna give you a hint. It's not drag show readings to children. Correct, yes. So what is it? 
I'm presuming you're going to say it's firearms. No, I'm not going to say it like it's an opinion. That's what it is. It's firearms. More than cancer, more than car accidents. And what you're telling me is you don't mind infringing free speech to protect children from this amorphous thing that you think of. But when it comes to children that have died, you don't give a flying fuck to stop that because that shall not be infringed. That is hypocrisy at its highest order. All right. <clears throat> In America, we have robust free speech protections. There can be a separate debate about whether prohibiting drag show readings to children would be unconstitutional. But there can also be a debate about whether these readings would be harmful to children, and if standing opposed to them could occur in the interest of protecting children. Aside from the constitutional questions, considering that there are valid reasons to believe that both drag show readings to children and gun restriction might be harmful, standing opposed to both of them is not necessarily hypocritical. Bottom line, it's important to dissect this stuff. Dissect what goes viral because millions of people fall for the rhetorical tricks that John uses. There's a lot more nuance to these topics and much better debate to be had about them than his straw men would ever allow. Just because he's a great performer, just because he's talented at delivering emotional lines, doesn't mean that John isn't deceiving you or that he's giving you a fair presentation of the topics. I'm Jonathan McCartney and I thank you for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something or learned how to look at some topics in a different light. I look forward to seeing you again.